Buenos Aires, South America. 7,000 miles from home. Unless you're watching in metric vision, in which case it's 11,265 kilometers. Sounds better in miles. 20 everyday men and women, including a beauty therapist, a referee, and a wrestler, will test their mettle on the world's nastiest obstacle course. One will win, 19 will lose, and I do mean lose spectacular. This is Total Wipeout. Let the games begin. Welcome to Total Wipeout. It's the journey of a lifetime for 20 brave souls who are willing to suffer bumps, bruises and humiliation on the path to almost certain failure. But only one will walk away 10,000 pounds richer and still have the use of all four limbs. Let's see what the course has in store for the contestants today. The Qualifier, wet, slippery fun. The Sweeper, wobbly, spinny and a lot less fun. And finally, the Wipeout Zone. Really quite hard and not much fun at all. Now, you'll have spotted something missing. That's right, health and safety regulations. But also, there's no dizzy dummies this week. You see, it's not all siestas and chorizo for the Argentinian course designers. Oh, no, no, no. They've been busy knocking up a brand new obstacle, the treadmill. Imagine two huge demolition balls swinging from side to side across a couple of giant running machines with the control knob ripped off and set to run fast. At last, a cool name, the Dreadmill. I could work with that. Dread. Anyway, let's start at the beginning with the qualifier. And here comes the first competitor. He could be a winner, although statistically that's very unlikely. Meet Petrolhead Gordon from Swindon. Word on the street, quite literally, is he can drive anything with four wheels. My co-host Amanda is at the top of the course with Gordon now, armed with her usual blend of encouragement and churlish giggling. Gordon, what is it that you do? I'm a chauffeur. So I pick up lovely people like yourself, take them back and forth to the airports on their holidays and business trips. So then you've been preparing for uh, the qualifier by doing lots of sitting down on your bottom, have you? Sitting down, beer and pizza. <laughs> Always a stable diet for fit athletes. Ah oh, yes, beer and pizza, the breakfast of champions. The first obstacle Gordon will face is the classic topple towers. Ankle supports and a snorkel could well come in handy here. <laughs> and Gordon, the chauffeur's off. The rarely seen kneeling approach there, followed by a drenching. All is back to normal. OK, he's a bit wobbly on the pontoons. Let's not forget, this man does sit down for a living, so this is a shock. Oh, hello, Gordon, yes. Onto the top of the towers. Here we go. Ooh, an unorthodox but effective technique. He sort of serves the towers as they topple. I like his style. Can he do it again? Oh, very nearly. There are no flies on Gordon the chauffeur, unless you count the larvae living in that pool. Oh yeah. There, there, there will be flies. So it's a hop, skip and a hobble to the hydraulic wall of hate. You know it, you love it, it's the Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch, meet Gordon. Gordon, oh, I see you've already met. So Gordon must now deal with the four big red balls. Okay. Or more accurately, let the big balls deal with him. He jumps and, oh! Gordon, the chauffeur, almost clears the second big ball completely there. Oh, it's a good job he's not on the meter. This would be costing a fortune by now. Up next is the last obstacle. It's the return of the lunar landing. Simple, really. Swing on the rope, land on the podium, or flail about and fall in the water. It'll be one of the two. OK. First attempt at this. No! Oh! There goes his knee. So close. Yet so far, 13 feet into the icy water below, to be precise. Because he failed the lunar landing, it's a heave onto the final pontoon and a surprisingly good time of 2 minutes 26. Hang on, he's pointing at Amanda. How did it feel for you? Brilliant. Exactly as planned. <laughs> but it was almost... Exactly in my mind as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Meet Lucy, a lettings administrator from London. So, Lucy, what have you been doing to prepare? Well, I'm a bit of a synchronised swimmer. 
used to be. So, um, you know, falling in the water, I think I'll be all right. Might give you a little demonstration. Will you be throwing a routine past the big red balls? Give us a, give us a sneak preview then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to come in so handy, Lucy. Just remember to smile. Uh, hope she's a bit more graceful in the water. Uh... And she's off. And she's over and she's in. Not a great start from Lucy. Not a lot of synchronicity in that swim either. But she's up onto the pontoons now. Yes, like it, grace, elegance, spearmint green shorts. Oh, a nifty cornering too. Onto the topple towers. And she's across in a flash. The second set now. Will they defeat it? No, they barely moved. This all looks very promising for Lucy. Prances across the topple towers like a nimble little elf. <laughs> this is going to take some beating. You can't beat elves, it's not allowed. Onto the big red balls now. Come on, Lucy. You can do it. Boy! Boy! Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah, that was less boing boing and more just boing sploosh. <laughs> what was that? Beautiful technique in the water. Boing boing Lucy has pluck, stamina, yes, and most importantly, her own Veruca socks on. Oh, Tarzana, there she goes. Oh, and back again now. Oh, no. <laughs> Desperate to do some more synchronised swimming. There's your chance. This is what Total Wipeout's all about. Grit, determination and rope burn. It's straight up onto the finishing pontoon for Boing Boing Lucy. Another little jig and she's done. And just 12 seconds behind Gordon, the chauffeur. Now, here's Dave from Derbyshire. Hmm, no. A good bit of trouble. So what is Dave? An impersonator? A comedian? <laughs> Village idiot? So I'm in the presence of holiness here at the top of the qualifier. I'm joined now by Catholic priest Father Dave. How are you doing? Very well, thanks, Amanda. Yeah, very excited as well. I'm really looking forward to that mud over there. It looks great. Oh, he's a man of the cloth. I feel bad about the village idiot thing now. I've got angel's wings and I'm going to fly, fly, fly around this course. <laughs> now maybe he's been out in the sun a bit too long. They don't wear hats, do they? In the water, onto the pontoons. Well, it's not dignified, but it's fast. Topple Towers. Oh, oh, my God, he's across the first. Onto the second set. Oh, almost made the second set. Competitors are making light work of the Topple Towers today, but mark my words, they're not easy. Some timely advice for the priest. Divine intervention is not strictly banned on Total Wipeout. It's just kind of frowned upon in the early stages. OK, he did well on the topple towers, but will his angel's wings kick in when they're really needed? You are my friends! They're not. They're so not. You see, with friends like that, who needs enemies? It was a leap of faith. Probably too much emphasis on the faith bit there. Some balance would have been better. Now, come on, Divine Dave. Can he be the first priest to right. lean a land? Here we go. Mr Mushroom. Uh, Sorry, uh, must, be the, must be the communion uh, wine talking. Here we go. Off he goes! Oh, well, I don't believe it. Divine Dave is truly divine. He's the first ever to complete the lunar landing and in two minutes and eight seconds. That is astonishing. I don't know what he's doing now. Yeah, someone call the bishop or somebody. Divine Dave had his faith. But what will these two competitors bring to the course? Meet Diane from Manchester and Ian from County Durham. Diane's secret weapon... That's the power of... Yes! Brilliant. And what about Ian? I may even levitate. I have been known to... Levitate. Go on, then. Well, I was dubious, but that's conclusive proof. I don't need to see his feet. And to measure the power of... Yes! Here's cutting-edge technology. The yes -o meter No time to test it. She's off. Seems to be working perfectly. Bye. 
got an accent. You no, 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 no. You can, you can accentuate the positive or just cheat. So the power of yes getting off to a dodgy start. It's a sort of not so sure. A new toy. I love this. Up to the yes, Diane. That's more like it. What about Ian and the power of levitation? Levitate. Oh, great work over the topple towers. Oh, so far no sign of actual levitation going on. Back with Diane, and let's check the yesometer. Run now, the power of. No. Oh, the yesometer never lies. Let's join Ian the levitator at the big balls. So far, no sign of any levitation. Now would be good. The balls. To infinity and beyond. Okay. Yeah, well, to the second big ball and, and not beyond. <laughs> what was he hoping for? I think he believed he could levitate. Don't know why I'm watching this bit in slow motion. Oh, we're not. No, this is Diane going flat out. The big red ball. Let's switch on the yes o meter. Oh, yes! yes! Yes. Okay, yes, we need a lot of yes. Right. On your marks. Get set. Yes. Go. Yes. 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 Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No. no. He's done it! Ian the Levitator finishes in 2 minutes 40. <laughs> and with a little assistance from Eduardo, who's always happy to say yes, Diane finally finishes in a modest 12 minutes 49. Next to tackle the qualifier is assistant pub manager Raymond from Manchester. He's a man with a dream. So Raymond, what would you do if you won the money here on Total Wipeout? Uh, we'll have a chihuahua called Romeo. And it's called Romeo because we're planning on buying three more chihuahuas and breeding them. And then, so if I won the money, I'd have chihuahuas and build a big chihuahua mansion for them all to live in. <laughs> Excellent. So let's join Raymond halfway round the course. And remember, he's doing all this for the love of his chihuahua, Romeo. Lucky miss for Romeo Raimondo there. Chihuahua. He's hanging in there. Could be the first one across. He could, and he is. He's done it. Romeo Raimondo racing up to the big balls. He's either fearless or he just has no idea what's about to happen. No. Oh. Still, at 2 minutes 16, that's a very good time, and Romeo Raimondo is one step closer to his dream of building a Chihuahua match. Chihuahua. So, time for the first look at the leaderboard. Divine Dave is in the top spot, followed by Romeo Raimondo and Gordon the Chauffeur. Fourth place goes to Boing Boing Lucy, and yes, 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 in sixth, it's Diane. Now, as you know, every week I present a report from the course in Argentina. The BBC calls this an educational feature. I prefer to call it a contractual obligation. So, here's this week's. The total wipeout course. Silent, deserted, not a soul to be seen. Ordinarily, this is where total wipeout contestants come to be interviewed by Amanda Byram. My caring, sharing, and occasionally glaring and swearing co-host. God, it is quiet. Lonely. What I wouldn't give for someone to talk to. Just another human. Here we are. These are my do's and don'ts for a successful interview with Amanda. Don't undersell yourself. My strengths um... Uh, you excited about the course today? Yeah. Do you have any particular strengths you can bring to the course today? Um, not particularly, no. You've been in, you know, really hard training? Yeah. Taryn, I think we've covered everything. Do have a healthy understanding of just how much of your dancing other people might want to see. Don't forget to have a great anecdote to tell. Tell me where you live. I live in the woods, in a treehouse. 
with dwarfs. I'm going to fly through this course today um, with the help of my spirit guide, Crystal Vale. What team do you play for? And the glance of goats. Choo, 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 choo. I, d I don't know what to say to that. Do pretend to be much fitter than you actually are. Are you sporty? Yeah, but um, I've done sport like most of my life. I do temp and bowling, that's my main sport. Is that a sport? I'm not this last horse in the race, I'm there. I'm the top jockey. Don't, whatever you do, pretend to be a monkey. That's an absolute no-no. Louise, you're a doctor. Is there anything you can take for that? So those are my do's and don'ts for a successful interview with Amanda. I don't care what you lot say. I think she's all right. So here's Andy from Kent, who seems to have already heeded my advice by preparing for Amanda with these interesting warm-up exercises. I'm gonna run, run, run as fast as I can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. And when I hit those big red balls, I'm gonna protect the family. Jaws. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's the face I was pulling while you were singing. Just the same. OK. Let's see if Andy is better at obstacle courses than he is at songwriting. Lennon McCartney, Elton John, Gary Barlow, and now Andy. Finds time to style his hair. True pop star there. No Gary Barlow, Andy really throwing himself at the topple towers. Oh, he was doing so very well. <laughs> so in his mind, he's going to run, run, run as fast as he can, but will he bounce, bounce, bounce like a ginger... I'm going to stop that whole thing now. Here we go. Oh! oh, oh. That'll be a yes to the bouncing thing, definitely. Oh, it's magnificent in an odd kind of way. No Gary Barlow, Andy really leaving up to his lyrics. That was impressive. And he's ready for an encore, storming in at 2 minutes 23. So far, the fastest times are all very close. This is proving to be a very quick qualifier. Up next, Charlotte, 19, a drama student from Crawley Down, West Sussex. Are you physically capable of taking on this course today, do you think? I think I am, yes. I'm quite flexible, so... Like what? Uh, well, I can pick a penny off from the floor. Oh, I can do that. No, no, I can't do it like that. Charlotte, if that doesn't get you across the big red balls, then absolutely nothing will. So, piggy bank Charlotte approaches the balls. Let's see who the real money's on. She, she, looks, she looks fit and ready for it. Come on, Charlotte. Yell. She never stood a chance with all those coppers in her pockets. Piggy Bank Charlotte finishes the qualifier with a time of 2 minutes 40 and 76 pence in loose change. This is Tony, the enforcer. He's a police community support officer. And Emma, another enforcer. She's a safe communities officer. Together, they are Yorkshire's front line for crime and minor disturbances. Jazz hands. Did she just say jazz hands? She did. And they're off! Ooh, innovative stuff from Emma. <laughs> Not physically designed for this! Go, oh, go, Tony! Oh, not great on the topple towers. Let's just hope these two never have to chase a baddie over an obstacle course. Not this particular one, are anyway. Enforcer Tony on the sucker punch. Learning who's boss. So it's the enforcer facing the big balls. Oh. Oh. Well, if this was a high jump competition, the enforcer would have cleared it. But it's not. It's the big balls and he missed. OK, the other enforcer needs to be decisive here. Mentally preparing yourself. No, no, this way, Emma. Yeah, a bit more preparation. There's quite a lot of preparation there. I'm making myself ball-shaped. You 
you can be too prepared. Come on, Emma, we haven't got all night. Yeah, sorry, my mistake. She did need a bit more preparation, actually. Tony and Emma both managed to finish. Emma in 6 minutes 38, Tony in a very competitive 2 minutes 51. What? Here's Ricky. He has a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and he spends all day recruiting experts for clients in the pharmaceutical industry. Boring. I'm gonna smash this wipeout course all up! When you watch me, you'll believe the hype and you better witness the fitness! Hang on, have I got the right guy here? Oh, I see he does a bit of wrestling in his spare time. He's big. He's strong. Yeah, what's he doing with Amanda? It's a good job for Ricky I'm not down there. I'd sort him out. So here's unassuming Ricky, his opponent today, the total wipeout qualifier. You can see the strength, yeah. if not the grace. Oh, body slams the topple towers. Quick gun show there, not necessary. How will the wrestler cope with the boxing gloves? This is a new discipline for him. Oh, where's your tag team partner when you need one? Let's see how Ricky tackles the big red balls. Balls ain't nothing! Yeah, that's Ricky, unassuming as always. Oh, <gasps> they are, you see, they are. Walk in the park. The final lunar landing. Will it be Smackdown or Splashdown? Oh! Oh. So unassuming Ricky finishes in a very fast two you minutes 17. Whoa! Yes. Oh, who's this? Ah. It's the man in black who strikes fear into the hearts of us all. Meet Dan, the football referee. He's terrifying. I'm the referee. I don't take any notices on the pitch. And I'm not taking any notices from this course. I'm going for it. Well, you did take a bit of nonsense from that pontoon, didn't you, Dan? Oh. There'll be a lot of very happy footballers out there right now. Oh! <laughs> Cheat! He dived! No one wants to see a referee get hurt. Certainly not in slow motion so you catch every detail. Oh. Come on, guys. Let's move on. And now, for once, let's see how a referee celebrates. Oh, yeah. Ah, the old Kevin Costner. <laughs> so, Red Card Dan jumps straight to the top of the leaderboard with an impressive two minutes five, while His Holiness Divine Dave is just three seconds behind. Down the board, and unassuming Ricky has knocked both No Gary Barlow Andy and Gordon the chauffeur down a peg or two. Followed by Boing Boing Lucy, the top woman so far in seventh place. Oh, and look, Piggy Bank Charlotte is level with Ian the Levitator. And finally, on to Enforcer Tony, who, despite a heroic run, finds himself near the bottom of the ladder. This man calls himself Mr. T. Actually, it's Paul Treasure from Dudley, who works in IT. He's come to show the big balls who's boss. That's not part of it. This is... Oh. Not quite part of the A-team anymore, are you, Mr. T? Mr. T finishes in three minutes and two seconds with a nasty injury to the bandana. <laughs> Rachel from Swansea can help. She's a physiotherapist. They do bandanas, don't they? So she copes. She's holding up well so far. No, not at all. Rachel went on to finish in 4 minutes, 28. Citizens of Great Britain, prepare yourselves for one of the greatest athletes this country has ever produced. Les. Hailing from Boston, Lincolnshire, Les has competed at international level and won loads of medals. What kind of stuff have you competed in? Well, last year I competed in the European Championships. I was reserved at 100 metres. I was reserved at 400 meters relay team, and I was semi in the semi-finals for the 200 meters. Yeah, that is the European Veterans Championship. There's our international sportsman. We should be in for a treat here today.
Les. Determined, athletic, graceful. And ready. He's away. Where's he gone? Okay, so a slippery start from there. Get, he's on, he's on. Les looks focused now. Wow, 55-year-old Les is performing like someone half his age. Does he now make that a third of his age? Look at him go! None of Les's medals have been in boxing, but that doesn't seem to bother him because he's nearly... He is across! Only the second competitor today. Surely all those years of veteran experience will help here. Oh. It did. That's some Olympic standard falling off a big red ball there. Probably already got a medal for that. Olympic Les rockets round the qualifier in a blistering 2 minutes 14. Proof that the aged don't always need help. Never again. Only popped out for a paper. Meet Joseph's mum, Amy, from Newcastle. Meet Christopher, Matthew and Daniel's mum, Nuala, from Manchester. And meet Peter and Mark's mum, Fiona, from Glasgow. It is heartwarming to see how far mums will go to embarrass their kids. Come on, mums, give it your best shot. Let's just get it over with. Finishes in three minutes twenty-seven. It was a lot harder than I expected. Fiona in four minutes thirty-four. I hadn't appreciated how much it would suck you dry, take away all your energy. And Nuala's run of two minutes forty-nine has squeezed her into the top twelve. Her boys will be proud. Christopher, Matthew, and Daniel would probably say they could have done that better than Mummy just did, but do you know what, boys? It's tough. So I'm joined here at the top of the qualifier by Tasha, who is a beauty therapist. Tasha, why are you here today? I just want to sort of break the stereotype, you know, the typical, maybe a bit thick, a bit ditzy, and the... Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's not the best start. <laughs> I'm going to break this course! I hope you don't break a nail! This has got 12 minutes written all over it, in fake tan. OK. Yeah, if you want to go make a cup of tea, now probably a good time. She wants to disprove the stereotype that beauty therapists are all girly. Yeah. Hang on, maybe I was wrong about Tasha. That was seriously brilliant. Feeling bad now about what I said. Tasha's tearing over the topple towers. Maybe it's something to do with those pink socks. Tasha and her nails face the lunar landing. And oh, 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 no. Tasha misses her landing, but this is a seriously quick run. She looks like a tough competitor straight away. Consider those beautician stereotypes eradicated forever. They're all intact. Yeah, maybe not. I feel like a woman. 19 competitors down, one to go. The leaderboard is looking tight at the top. But will today's final competitor have what it takes to make it through to the sweeper? And by what it takes, I mean stamina, skill, and mindless disregard for their own personal safety. Amanda. So I'm here now at the top of the total wipeout course with Comrie, who's from Kent. Comrie, do you have any kind of hobbies that will help you uh, physically on the course today? I've got lots of hobbies. I uh, have a horse, so I ride most days. I climb, I'm training for a marathon. Um, I swim, I cycle, um, snowboard. <laughs> All right, I shall call her Catch Potato Comrie. Which of her many skills will she be using first? Body slamming the pontoon wasn't in that list. But she's up and away. Marathon skills on show now and galloping across the topple towers. That's probably horse riding skill. Oh. This is a fast run. Pretty 
good effort on the ball from Catch Potato Comrie. She did reach the third ball with her face. It might be tied at the top of the leaderboard, but Catch Potato Comrie is definitely going to make an impact. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Just! Oh, only the second person to make the lunar landing. That must put her near the top. Let's check the leaderboard to find out. Oh, wicked! And there you go. Catch Potato Comrie gate crashes into pole position. Just one second ahead of red card Dan, with Divine Dave only three seconds behind him. Olympic Les edges out Romeo Raimondo and unassuming Ricky, both of whom are nearly half his age. Tasha and her nails make it in at number nine. Finally, a lucky tie for last place between Piggy Bank Charlotte and Ian the Levitator, both of whom go through. So as today's triumphant 12 qualifiers march on to the next round to face the fearsome sweeper, it's time to say farewell to the eight runners-up. Don't you just hate goodbyes? Anyway, bye. Now you know I can smile without you. I can't smile without you. I can't So as the eight smile their way out of the competition, it's a barrel of laughs for the remaining 12 who face potential oblivion in the sweeper. So it's the return of the classic sweeper, but the Argentinians have come up with a dramatic twist. Welcome to the sack race from hell. Well, it was a choice between this or the egg and spoon race. The last six will go through to the next round, but the game does not stop until there is a last man or woman or sack standing. So standing tall on podiums one and two are Piggy Bank Charlotte and Tasha and her nails. Come on, girls, we need to win it. Mind your nails. On three and four are Boing Boing Lucy and Divine Dave. I might be wearing blue, but I'm a kangaroo boy. Yeah, maybe it's a parable. On podium five, six, and seven are Ian the Levitator, Olympic Les, and Red Card Dan. Three, four, five, who's six, counting the seven, reasons he eight, wished he hadn't nine, applied for this show. See? On eight and nine, Couch Potato Comrie and Romeo Raimondo. Ricky, I beat you in the qualifier, and I'm going to beat you on the sweeper. You're going down, big man. On a reinforced podium ten, it's unassuming Ricky. This sweeper ain't nothing, and none of my competitors are either. I'm the hype, and you better believe it. OK. And on 11 and 12, Gordon the chauffeur and no Gary Barlow Andy. Mr Sweeper, it's time for you to brush away my competition. Come on! Feeling sweepy? Well, it's time to put a smile back on your face. It's the sweeper. Are you all ready? Wow, no. oh, there's no time for indecision. Three, two, one! Well, they're off. I've no idea if it's even possible to jump the sweeper in sacks, but they are. They are. Boing Boing Lucy wobbles. Oh no, the levitator is down. Where were those levitation skills Ian told us about? I'm beginning to think he was lying. I tried to pull the sack off and it just took my legs away, stayed away. So, the powers of levitation have just failed me. The David Blaine book's going straight in the bin. Where it will live for 40 days without food or water. Right, back to the action. Oh, someone else has gone. It's Red Card Dan. Clinging on, but he must get back up before the sweeper arm returns or he's out. Ah, well, rules are rules, so it's an early bar for Red Card Dan. I was so proud of how I did on the qualifier, but I just, just disappointed with myself today that I couldn't hang in there just for a few, few more rounds. I want to get back to see my friends now, see how they did, really. Friends? Referees don't have friends, do they? Right, back to the sack dwellers. Ten left, six go through. I don't know how they're doing this. Now remember, that sweep arm gets faster and higher with every revolution. The sacks don't change, though. They just keep on making things, well, impossible. Still on, still on. Oh, no! Gordon the chauffeur's gone! Oh, 
Didn't know whether to hold onto the sack or protect his face, so he did neither. Remember, only six can go through, but everyone now hanging on in there. Hurry up and fall, guys. That Argentinian farmer will notice his sacks are missing and his potatoes are spoiling in the sun. Oh, Shana's gone! Tasha's gone! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The sweepers claimed another two. Piggy bank Charlotte first, then Tasha and her nails. She didn't break a nail, may have broken a nose. People definitely thought I probably wouldn't even get through the qualifiers, so I'm really proud of myself, so... Hopefully they will be too. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Tasha. Someone hand her the total wipeout tissue, please, if it's been dry. One more down. Amanda's right. The next one down will be eliminated by the smallest of margins and by the largest of revolving punch bags. Catch Potato Comrie has a wobble, the competition really hotting up, as are those thick weave hessian sacks, as you imagine. Still going. Speed of it. <laughs> no, Gary Barlow Andy nearly lost his sack there. Cash Potato Comrie is down. She's got to get up before the sweeper returns and keep hold of that sack. Oh, wait, no, today's gone? fastest qualifier, Cash Potato Comrie, is out, leaving just the final six. Romeo Raimondo flips into the water first, followed by unassuming Ricky, who's down for the count. Once again, Cash Potato Comrie concedes defeat as bodies drop around him. Absolutely gutted. To go from first to not even through the next round. Oh dear. Emotional this week. Look, Olympic Les takes a tactical jump. He knows he's safely through and he's not in it for the glory. So from now on, it is just for pride. Only Divine Dave, no Gary Barlow Andy, and Boing Boing Lucy left. Andy's down! They're all down! The sweepers tidied things up nicely and last man standing, I think, was Divine Dave. I do hope no Gary Barlow Andy didn't damage his vocal cords with that face plant. I wouldn't want to impair that beautiful singing voice. Boing Boing Loose has definitely lost her bounce, but it doesn't matter. She's the only woman through to the next round. And finally, Divine Dave has fallen to his knees. Someone's answered his prayers, though. He's the last man standing. It was so exciting. And I feel all that experience I had practising computer games with a big monkey jumping over barrels was fantastic, you know. So, obviously, in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle, sometimes computer games can really work, and I think this one did. Right. Well, God moves in mysterious ways, while Divine Dave just talks in mysterious ways. But he is safely through to the next round. So, what is the next round? Well, this is the moment I have been waiting for. A brand new, terrifying obstacle for Total Wipeout. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mum, brace yourself for the Dreadmill. Now sit tight, here's how it works. The six remaining competitors have been split into three heats. Within each heat, two competitors go head-to-head -head on industrial-sized treadmills. Is that too easy for you? OK, as promised, let's throw in a couple of giant demolition balls powered by grumpy Argentinians. As the round progresses, these demolition balls will swing lower and lower until they demolish the runners. If, or rather when, the competitors get knocked down, they've got just seconds to scramble back to their feet before they're spat out into the pool of despair. So, the first to take a dip in each heat is eliminated, leaving the three finalists who qualify for the wipeout zone. Got it? Good. Here's a quick reminder of who'll be facing that heady mix of demolition ball, grumpy Argentinian and fast-moving rubber. I'm the money. I love chihuahuas and build a big chihuahua mansion. Chihuahuas love him and he loves them. It's Romeo Raimondo. I'm coming to get you! The Usain Bolt of the veteran athletic scene, Olympic Les. Oh, 
the woman who's coined the new total wipeout catchphrase, boing boing, it's Lucy. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on. His name's Andy, and he's no Gary Barlow. It's no Gary Barlow Andy. I'm going to smash this wipeout course right up! The wrestler who hasn't faked his way here, unassuming yeah. Ricky. Ah. I must confess, I didn't think he'd make it this far. It's Catholic priest Divine Day. So, how do they decide who goes against who? Well, this is pretty complicated, so pay attention. They put all the names in Eduardo's hat. I pulled them out. Here's who got drawn first. The first battle is between Romeo Raimondo and Olympic Les. This is going to be a corker. I'm terrified about being drawn with Les. Uh, I think it's the favourite. Oh, yeah, I'm certainly going to beat Ray. And yes, I want to get through to the wipeout zone. I've always wanted to the wipeout zone. It must be at least eight weeks I've been watching it on television now, and I want to get there and do it. Yes. Yeah. Amanda now stood a safe distance from those demolition balls, raring to get things underway. Three, two, one! So the dreadmill gets switched on for the very first time, and great news, it works! Didn't short circuit and catch fire or anything. All the boys have got to do now is stay between those red markers. Taking it easy now, but that's all going to change with the klaxon. And there it is! The klaxon means two things. Firstly, that those terrifying demolition balls have started swinging. And secondly, that Olympic Les and Romeo Raimondo now require clean underwear. The pressure is on. Starts off slowly, but believe me, it's going to get much, much faster. If we can believe the bloke who built it. Romeo Raimondo looks very much aware of the demolition ball. Olympic Les looking more relaxed. They're swinging lower and lower now. Both competitors having to do some serious ducking. I'm trying to make this sound very, very serious. It's ridiculous. Remember, only one is going through to the final, so any stumble could spell an end to their total wipeout dream of winning £10,000. Oh, Romeo Raimondo's hit, and he's down. He needs to get up very quickly to avoid the water, and he's up, he's up. He's been hit again. And he's into the water this time. So Olympic Les is the oldest competitor ever to go through to the wipeout zone. But Romeo Raimondo is out. His chihuahua will be gutted. That was so scary. That was terrifying. You were up. You got yeah. back up again. Yeah. I got back up and then I don't know what happened actually. It's a bit of a blur now. One heat down, two to go. The next draw sees Boing Boing Lucy go head to head with no Gary Barlow Andy. I'm representing the ladies out there. I'm the last girl in the competition at the moment, so I'm just going to give my all. I'm going to go for it and knock him out. She's really fit. She uh, she keeps herself in great shape, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just going to keep my cards close to my chest. Only one of these two can make it through to the wipeout zone. Which one will it be? <laughs> They're off. Well, no Gary Barlow, Andy and Boing Boing Lucy look evenly matched at the moment. Both equally determined not to get knocked down. Yeah, Lucy's losing momentum already. If ever there was a good time to have eyes in the back of your head, it would be now. God! The demolition balls forcing the competitors to duck lower and lower now. Who will be first to get hit? And will it be funny? Remember, they must both remain in the centre of the treadmill. There's no sprinting forward and cheating. They have to stay between those lines. I can't imagine that's much fun. Don't stop and talk. Oh, that was a heavy blow to Boing Boing Lucy. She's over, but what a recovery. She's taking a knock. Get up, Lucy. Come on. Oh, she's spinning around like a top now, and she's in the water. That means that no Gary Barlow and is through to today's final. He is, well, he's happy. Boing Boing Lucy took a big knock. Never really recovered. She's out of the competition. When you
you fell, you got back up so brilliantly. What happened the second time around? Oh, I just don't know. It just got that little bit faster, I think. Yeah. And little Lucy tried to do it, but oh. I'm so happy. Anyway, I've, it's been really good fun. So to the final treadmill heat, it's Divine Dave versus Unassuming Ricky. I reckon this is definitely a David and Goliath situation, and we all know what happened in that story. My chances against the priest are the best chances out of anybody in this game. He's a nothing. I don't even know his name. I don't even want to know his name. Yeah, you're watching Total Wipeout, the only show on TV where you'll see a Catholic priest and a wrestler running side by side on giant treadmills whilst being buffeted by giant demolition balls. Both men seem to be having fun at the moment. It's nice. But that's about to change. Two contenders, one remaining spot in the wipeout zone. Who will seize it? Oh, Ricky was not expecting that. Both looking relaxed. I'm assuming Ricky particularly seems to have found his stride. Divine Dave now looking a bit worried. Remember, these guys are two of today's fastest qualifiers, and Divine Dave was the last man standing in the sweeper. Still going head to head. It's a battle royal, but there is only room for one of them in the wipeout zone. A nice shorts, Dave. Divine Dave takes a graze, but he's down and scrambling to get back up again. The dreadmill dragging him back quicker and quicker. Get up! Oh! Really scrambling with everything he has. He's in the water. Divine Dave is out, and unassuming Ricky is the third and last finalist to go through. A little stumble was all it took. Once Divine Dave was down, he really struggled to get going again. He puts up a real fight, but in the end, the dreadmill always wins. That was painful to watch. You were down on your knees and you were praying. I was. I what was happened? Scrambling. Scrambling. It took me by surprise. Oh, it was so big, that, that large thing that came from the sky. But, uh, evil, wasn't well, it? Evil, wicked, <laughs> dark. Look how dark it looks, even now, a shadow casting over us. Today's three finalists are Olympic Les, No Gary Barlow Andy, and Unassuming Ricky. But there can be only one winner. And so, as night falls and the temperature drops, the competition reaches boiling point. Does that work? I might have overcomplicated. Oh, okay. Here's how the finalists made it this far. I don't think I've really surprised myself in getting to the final. I was always secretly confident that I was going to get here. It's a spectacle and I like to be the centre of it. There's going to be people watching me everywhere and I want them to look and admire and to witness the fitness. One's 30 years younger than me and one's 20 years younger than me. What am I doing here? I can't have a granddad beat me. Who wants a granddad to beat him? His mental state is absolutely amazing. The guy is so experienced that, um, yeah, he's definitely one to watch for. I am extremely competitive. When I want a dog, I want to beat him to the end of the road. Yes, I'm that sort of guy. I want to absolutely smash them in the final. I don't want it to be close. I want to get a great score. I want to be a landslide. I want to embarrass the other two. I've tried to be the joker in the pack throughout this whole competition, but it's time to see serious Andy now. An old man can win Total Wipeout, and I'm here to prove he can. What a lineup! The oldest competitor ever to enter the Wipeout Zone, a wrestler who's going to burst if he gets any more hyped up, and the greatest singer songwriter since Mozart. Okay. This I have to see. But first, what will they be facing in the Wipeout Zone? So, three brave competitors, and ahead of them, for starters, it's a heart-stopping slide down Killer Surf. And then to cleanse the palate, a short swim and the barrel run. Now the main course, an arm-aching swing across the monkey bars, followed by the stomach-churning spinner. For dessert, the competitors must face the brusher and then the launch pads before it's coffee and mints at the finish podium where the clock finally stops. Two contestants are about to zone out, but one will zone in as the total wipeout champion. It's the wipeout zone and Ricky is at the start line. I told you to believe the hype. Now witness the fitness. Actually, 
I'm witnessing the witness, as is unassuming Ricky any minute now. He's in. Looking strong on the swim to the barrel run. Unassuming Ricky wrestles slow-moving, dense objects for a living, so these barrels should be no problem. He's onto the run. He jumps one. He jumps two. And oh no, he slipped! He's over now! This is costing him time. Get up! Get up! Barrel one, unassuming Ricky, nil. Those barrels weigh 50 kilograms each. This is a very slippery surface. It's a miracle he even stayed on. A big guess. Oh no, he's over again, but the crowd is right behind him. Go, unassuming Ricky. He's cleared the run. Onto the monkey bars now. This requires arms of steel and a vice like grip. That's not helping. That is, though. He's on, he's staying on. He has done it. A clean run at the spinner, and this could be a very fast time. He's onto the spinner. As we now know, getting off is the difficult bit. It's all about the timing, choosing his moment. He's gone for it. Oh, no! Everything now just so slippery out there. That's cost him. Come on, baby! Up the ladder. And then he faces the brusher. Come on, baby! He's always got something in reserve for the crowd. He's a real showman. Oh, he's off again! He was looking good there, too. It's so sudden. He may have fallen a couple of times, but this is still a quick run. Just the launch pads to go before the podium and stop the clock. The clock is still ticking, but it's not bad. Keep going. One launch pad down. Focus, I'm assuming, Ricky. Focus. He's onto the second one. Composes himself. He's jumped. He's done it. And assuming Ricky has finished strongly, the benchmark has been set. Remember, he doesn't know his time yet, so let's go to a man. Your wrestling name is Ricky the Hype. Do you think that performance was in any way hyped, or do you think it deserves praise? It's all right. I can tell you right now, Ricky, that your time was 2 minutes and 45 seconds. I feel beautiful, baby, beautiful. Yours is the time to beat, but our next competitor is Andy. Wipeout Zone, it's time for me to pay you a visit. Come on! Ah, but will the Wipeout Zone return the favour? No, Gary Barlow, Andy, and pay you £10,000. We'll need to beat 2 minutes 45 to be in with a chance. Well, he's in the water and swimming strongly for the barrel run. on the beam. Don't forget, this next obstacle has just floored a wrestler, so how will the pop star fare? Whoa, this boy can jump out. That is how to do the barrel run. More of this, and no Gary Barlow Andy is going to beat unassuming Ricky's time. Onto the monkey bars now. Smart move. No Gary Barlow Andy's reached out as far as possible before he stepped off the platform. Whoa, he's tearing through this course. The spinner now. This can make or break a wipeout zone run. He's on. Now he's got to jump off, and he's missed his first chance to do that. Will he take the second as he comes round again? So much hangs on this next move. He goes for it, and yes! Oh, he's still in his teeth, and his right knee clings on. Just the brusher and launch pads to go now. This is looking like a winning run. Here we go on the brusher. Oh, no! That's a disastrous start to the brusher. Lost his footing at a crucial moment. So now he faces a swim to the ladder and a climb up for the launch pads. And he's psyching himself up for the final hurdle. That's a trampoline hurdle, but it's a hurdle. Oh, he's on! Absolutely no idea that at this point he is still ahead of Ricky. He doesn't know that. He's onto the second. No, he's fallen short of the second. That's going to cost him dearly. Quite possibly to the tune of £10,000. He's got to swim, he's got to climb. Every muscle in his body must be burning now. By this stage, it really is mind over matter. He makes the first launch pad. Now the second. He's, he's on. It's a short jump to the finish. Can he do that? Any strength left at all? 
He's done it! But it's not enough. Remember, no Gary Barlow Andy doesn't know his time yet. It's over to Amanda to break the news. Oh, that was unbelievable. You did so well at the beginning of the course and then you kind of faltered a little bit at the end. What went wrong? Balance. Out of steam. Need to hit the gym a bit more. Well, I can tell you right now that Ricky, you were faster. Andy, I'm sorry, you're not going through. Olympic Les is all that stands between unassuming Ricky and that £10,000 prize. Not that he knows that. Can the oldest wipeout zone competitor beat the 24-year-old wrestler? Don't forget, Olympic Les is a champion athlete. He's swum to the beam, he's on. This is greased and as slippery as, well, it's possible to imagine. Up onto the barrel run. It'll be hard to better know Gary Barlow Andy's pace on this. Let's not forget, I'm assuming Ricky came unstuck here. Olympic Les, those springs over the barrels without even breaking sweat. The crowd love it. Now, the monkey bars. Yes! Oh, what arm? He's in trouble, he's in the water. Olympic Les dropped like a stone. That's going to damage his time straight away. But veteran athlete Olympic Les digs deep. He's back up and across in no time. Onto the spinner now. He's on. Les looking tired now. Taking a breath. He's going to have to make his jump soon. Maybe this time. Here it comes. He jumps, but... And it's... Oh, he can't hang on! He's off! I really thought he was safely on then, but gravity and... The slippy life jacket just got the better of Les. So, the brushing. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to. Oh, not Les, though. And knowing smile from unassuming Ricky. Nevertheless, Les digs deep once again. He's experienced enough to know just keep going. All hope of winning the £10,000 has evaporated now. But come on, he's on to number one. Now we've got number two launch pad. He leaps. He's up. Come on, Les. Superb effort from the veteran athlete. Now a leap to the podium and he's finished. He has. Well done, Olympic Les. Thank you! And I know that you've, uh, you've said that you generally beat people half your age, Les. I do indeed. Well, unfortunately not tonight, because Ricky Martin, you are still the reflection of perfection, the total wipeout champion! Come on, baby! So, wrestler, unassuming Ricky has lived up to the hype and become tonight's total wipeout champion. Don't forget, this won't be the last time we see Ricky, Andy and Les. All three will return to take part in the series final, where we will crown the Total Wipeout Series champion. Time's up for me, but I'll see you next time for some brand new obstacles like this. <laughs> and some new wipeouts like that. In the meantime, though, it's good night from Amanda and 